I regularly use Half-Life 2 as an example of a game that should run on pretty much anything, and then I'll continue to joke about how it'll even run on your granny's marital aid. But then, invariably, on all of these videos, I get comments where people tell me, actually, David, back in the day, Half-Life 2 was considered an extremely demanding game to run. So, when on Craigslist, I saw a listing for a system from about that era, uh, it's a bit older than Half-Life 2, but roughly the same era, I decided to buy it and see how well it'll run Half-Life 2. The problem is, it, it's an old office PC that doesn't have dedicated graphics in it, so it kind of turned into an exercise of trying to just game on a 20-year-old iGPU. Um, yeah, so let's see what that's like. Before we get into that though, if you want to help support the channel, buy more random crap for videos, and you want to get some cool clothes in the process, check out the link in the description below for some David merch. Now the first thing that you'll notice, aside from the easy access, is the fact that it's got a CD drive and a DVD drive with a floppy thrown in just for good measure. So regardless of what physical media you want in there, this bad boy can handle it. We've got a spec sheet sticker over here, and the only thing that I want to point out is I think the RAM has been upgraded, but we'll, we'll have a closer look when we get inside. Uh, we've got the aforementioned easy access, and then we've got what looks like actual airflow in the front, which gives it a leg up on the average modern Dell system. On the back, there's not a whole lot going on, but we do have a rear I.O. that is not too dissimilar to the GT710 gaming PC that I bought off eBay a couple weeks ago. On the side, we've just got some branding with a bit of ventilation. But with that, let's open her up. Ooh. On the inside, it just kind of looks like a PC. I don't know what I was expecting, like Sanskrit writing on the walls of the case, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but it actually looks surprisingly modern in here, aside from all of the like IDE cables everywhere. There is a lot of IDE going on in here. You can see that you've got this front airflow. There may not be a fan on there, but you do have an exhaust fan up here, so it'll definitely pull air through the case. The motherboard layout's also very familiar, aside from the baby puke yellow motherboard color scheme. RAM-wise, I think that is a gig of DDR1 with the Pentium CPU under here, which after we do the testing, I'll take that off and we'll, we'll have a closer look at what's going on underneath there. I'm excited to see what like an 18 year old thermal paste application looks like because I'd be really surprised if this has been redone at any point since then. Um, yeah, let's just kinda... That is an interesting mounting method. I mean, it's definitely not what I'd call a good thermal paste application. You can see that the corners of the CPU didn't actually touch the cooler, but the actual thermal paste is still relatively wet, so it's not too bad. And then down there we have the socket, which actually looks like a small AM4 socket. Uh, it's pretty cool. And you can see we have our 20 year old CPU, it was actually made in 2001 and it's a 2.5 GHz Pentium 4. And this is still from back in the day when Intel had the pins on the CPU as supposed to in the socket. Interestingly, with these older Intel Pentium CPUs, they didn't actually have the iGPU physically on the CPU itself, like with modern processors, but they actually have the iGPU on the motherboard's chipset. And the specific iGPU that we have on this motherboard is the Intel Extreme Graphics. I guess we'll see how extreme it really is later in the video. Now down here, you can see that we've only got three PCI slots and there's actually a missing AGP slot up here. So I think a more premium version would have come with an AGP slot for like a better graphics card support. But considering the fact that we do have PCI in the system, it means we can drop a 3080 Ti in here, no problem. Although the power supply would definitely not have a good time. The CMOS battery orientation is also pretty weird, although that does actually look like it would be much easier to get out. But yeah, other than that, it's actually surprisingly boring in this old office PC. I really don't know what I was expecting. But with that, let's power it up and have a look at the very old Windows XP install on here. Oh, I haven't seen that splash screen in a while. Hey, 2003 Norton antivirus. And then here we've got Compact Organize. So this 
is what bloatware looked like 20 years ago. Oh yeah, I actually just remembered how the guy set this system up before selling it. So he actually reinstalled Windows XP using the, uh, the restore image on the hard drive. So I think this is quite representative of what it would have looked like out of the box. And it's got the clap real bad. If this PC was a sailor back in the 1800s, it would have like three days left to live. Uh, it's even got a hot deals app. What is that? That seems like it's 100% a virus. Yep, trying to get you to buy old stuff through Compact. Damn. It's got Internet Explorer and AOL on it. Wow. Do you think I should try and call this number and see, <laughs> see what happens when I call the AOL hotline? Um, okay, so I, I think AOL may not be working anymore. Now, after what definitely wasn't several hours of struggling, uh, I have Steam installed here with Fraps. That's unfortunately the only FPS counter I can get installed. So let's start out very, very optimistically with Half-Life 2. Honestly, I'd be surprised if we could play any game with 3D acceleration, but yeah, let's, let's start off with Half-Life 2. Let's just try Half-Life. That's it, that's all, you're just gonna dump me straight back into, try, let's try again. Nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. it doesn't even launch. Oh, fine, after trying a bunch of stuff, I still can't get it working. So I guess let's try Half-Life 1. Okay, so this is the settings that we're gonna work with. Let's see if we can get a game that's actually not significantly older than this PC running on it. Oh, okay, okay, we're getting, about 30 frames per second here. I don't know. You can't see anything, can you? The game is really dark. Video. Has it crashed? Oh, come on. I mean, it dips below 30 occasionally, but it's, it's, it's closer to 40. It's not too bad. There's some definite input lag, though. Let's see what happens if you select low video quality. Why does the helps with lower end hardware... Oh, oh! Oh, I think, I think it's overheating, actually. I think the graphics chip, <laughs> I think the graphics chip has hit a thermal wall. It's, I, I think it's completely seized up. Okay, let's just, oh, there we go. You press the kill the system button and then it's fine. This actually feels remarkably like playing Half-Life on a PC when Half-Life came out. Cause we've got like the low power settings enabled here and it's struggling, it's really, <laughs> Like this whole opening scene was just the game going, look at these graphics. Whoa, I'm the same age as Morgan Freeman. That's pretty cool. Let's see what happens if we crank it to 1080p. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is gonna end really bad. Okay, I feel like at this point, we're starting to measure frame rate in frames per minute as opposed to per second here. So far, we've had one this minute. Oh, two. Okay, so let's try Quake 2. Let's try an even older 3D game. I hope you can see anything, but we've actually sprung straight up to about 60 FPS. We're not quite pegged there, but we're, <laughs> we're pretty close to 60 frames per second. Um, it feels pretty good. There's a little bit of input lag, but it's, it's okay. Ooh. There's a man shooting shotguns at me. Okay, so now let's see if we can crank the resolution a bit. That? Oh, what are we at now? 400 by 300. Yeah, this, this honestly, ow. No, 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 no. This visually reminds me, this is very similar to how I first experienced Quake. Okay, so Quake works even when you're not running it at 400 by 300, so that's pretty cool. So what we've learned is that this PC is on the verge of dying, and if you want to game using a 20-year-old iGPU, you pretty much need to forget about anything with 3D graphics in it, which is fine. There are a lot of good 2D games. Uh, but let's see what happens when we drop a PCI graphics card into this system. Who knows? Maybe we can even run a bit of Half-Life 2. Okay, now that we have an Uber GPU installed, let's see if we can run Half-Life 2 this time. Ooh, okay, we're in, we're in. Oh, damn. We're not even hitting 60 frames per second here. Wait, let me see, Is are all the settings on low? It, it, it really looks like it. Let's turn that stuff down. 
Well, that's way better. We're above 60 frames per second now. Oh, it's blue screen. Come on. Okay, we're back. Um, wow, this PC feels so ill. Yo, the fact that we're getting sub 60 frames per second in this area means that it's really... Ooh, 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 them frame drops. Ooh, no, yeah, this is not going super well. This is the worst running section in the game. But, yeah, this is not good. Oof, this is rough. The frame rate is all over the place. And yeah, this isn't what I'd call playable. And I guess this proves a well-known fact that playing Half-Life 2 back in the day on lower-end hardware was a real kick in the teeth. And that brings me to the end of another video which was basically just an entire day of me struggling with an old computer. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos kind of like this one, I guess. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.